welcome, welcome to the Frag Talks podcast, episode seven. We have my man Dylan. He's the marketing. What what is it? Marketing. Marketing coordinator. Coordinator for the Minnesota Rocker, and my good friend, aka Thunder Hips. How's it going, man? Uh, it's going well. It's going well. Aka Thunder Thunder Hips. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he's live as well at Twitch TV forward slash Thunder the underscore hips is not the underscore sorry thunder underscore hips you know that's, that's right that is right that's right um <laughs> thanks for being on man i know we've been trying to get this going since like two months now we've been trying to find a date for this so i'm finally glad that we were yeah at least right we had going. a little covid action we had a little a baby yeah. i mean yeah geez. yeah yeah we had a baby you know <laughs> <laughs> we, we we had the baby that's right yeah uh yeah no it, uh with all the stuff going on we had the champs weekend and then we had the everything going on behind the scenes for you guys with uh finding the new roster for the minnesota rocker and you planning whatever you plan behind the scenes for that and uh yeah so it was, it was a little difficult to find the time but we finally did it that's right thank you man thank you yeah so, of course of course Tell me about how, how, where did you come from to get, like, where did you start? Like, before you were at Minnesota Rocker, what did you do? Yeah, um, well, I actually owned my own business uh, since about 2016 or so. Um, I was a marketing consultant for a bunch of different tech startups. Um, I honestly was all over the place. At the time, I was uh, more or less homeless. Um, I was living in my car with my dog. Uh, we, we would travel around and um, try to find clients. Honestly, it was it was my way of going like door to door. I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, but what I did was I just loved working with startups. I loved working in tech. Uh, and over over time, I found my way back to Minnesota. Um, I was just cruising around, and when I got back here, uh, I I segued into um, healthcare a lot with different. Um, different businesses in that in that realm uh before eventually hearing about a call of duty league team coming to minnesota so from there i really just tried to put out you know anything i had into um the opportunity to showcase what i do um with my other clients in in what i do now for v1 and for rocker so yeah pretty cool pretty cool opportunity yeah um so like how how far into it was it before you got hired like i i was following from like the minute the mn uh, whatever the North Cod MN. Comet caught in men like Twitter started and all that. Were you, were mm-hmm. you there from like kind of like that day one or, or when did they bring you on? No, no, I wasn't tired until um, January, but I was like you, man. And I think a lot of uh, people still like it's where we were all big fans, right? Yeah, before, yeah. before anything else were fans. Um, and I, like I said, I was just, I knew I wanted the opportunity and I wanted the, the chance. So I was really, really caught up in um the announcement part and then i I got pretty hyped just watching like the youtube videos that were coming out and like i was getting into it man so it was it was a lot um it was a lot for me to to try to like put together full pitch decks and really wanted to get an opportunity to uh join the team obviously you know be a part of the staff and and to you know get the opportunity has been it's been pretty cool yeah i know uh from the from day one i tried to be like that one fan that was just adding on everything because I, I i applied as soon as the, the thing went live i i did the first uh kind of test thing they did for like are you going to be good enough to be like the content in- intern or, or is your mindset right and i passed that i got all the way through it i got the the papers that says i got the job and then i, I found out i was having a baby and was like i can't do it right now <laughs> I was, yeah, it was damn, one man. of those, it was one of those things, man, there was like, I, it was my dream job. It was like in the bag. We were just trying to work out visa stuff. And it was like right before COVID hit. So it was like visas for ca- for Canadians right now are pretty, they're not easy to get, especially like me. I, I don't have like a large, like college degree or anything that would label me as like a prime candidate for, for the job. But, it, sure. but I had to like, uh, I had to like, be like i can't do it right now and oh it, it broke my heart but it, it i was, was about to say yeah it was no. it was one of those things where i was like 
doesn't mean it's gone forever but it just wasn't the right time so it, yeah absolutely that's how we all are like i said man i think that's what we we're all fans first like yeah. you know i think i connected with you before even i think we were following each other by this and now you know even yeah, like yeah. the cod mn situation so yeah that's that's what i think all of this is about is you know the difference is only you know who writes the check honestly we're all in this the, we're all building esports we're all trying to grow this thing and um no man i i have honestly just appreciated like our connection and our our professional relationship after that too so that's that's what it's all about to me yeah yeah and and the friends that you made like when uh, you guys did the announcement and then the discord came a thing and then like minnesota like everybody was like <laughs> who, who's, like who's gonna be fans and then we had like you guys were having like the Min minnesota like watch parties at the bars and people were coming out and you just didn't see that from other people like so the fan base right off the bat was like loyal and they were just good people and that was always nice to see because there are some toxic toxic fans in, <laughs> in any sport but like call of duty can be pretty toxic it's Call of Duty, baby. That's why we love it. Yeah, That's why yeah. we love it. Yeah. I, uh, no, it's testament to this. This, I mean, I'll probably say this a billion times, but um, this is the coolest staff I've ever worked with. The coolest coworkers I've ever had. They're all badasses. They're absolute geniuses. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I would say the word solution based, but they're they're just. Uh, it's impossible not to like working with these with these people. So yeah, it's all a testament that. to them, man. All a testament to them. I believe that. So you were. You were homeless for a while. You said you you came back to Minnesota. So like, where were you? Were you just driving around to different states and stuff, trying to find work? <laughs> Kinda, yeah. So in uh, I grew up in Minnesota. Um, I'm from Waconia, Minnesota, uh, okay. way out, way out west. Um, nice little spot though. And after college, I was working in um, sales, and I didn't. I was getting there, you know, doing my best with things, but. Um, wasn't really liking it and i actually broke my back in 2015 um yeah. i was drinking with some friends and i was sitting on a balcony i fell off the balcony on the third floor so Damn. not ideal yeah i broke my yeah. back and, and after that i had a very like come to moment of holy shit like i need to go do what i feel like i want to do and at that time it was just travel so i hopped in my car and i went to colorado um so i lived in colorado for a while where i was just to it. I loved it. I was working construction after a bit. Um, yeah. I had the opportunity to, you know, climb and hike and, and all things that I would have been devastated if I couldn't do because of my back. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So anyways, oh, uh, it all came around though when I, when I, um, I started seeing these social media posts about um, starting up a social media company and, yeah. you know, just pitching yourself to businesses like that. Um, so I started doing that and I noticed I could make enough money to live, uh, you know, out of my car. I liked yeah. camping and everything. It's people are always like, that was, that's pretty homeless. And I'm like, Oh, it was my choice somewhat. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it was fun though. And I camped around and then, like I said, eventually it brought me back here. So yeah, that's sick. That's such a cool thing. Like I, uh, my story is like, I lived in the middle of uh, like the Ontario and I lived like two and a half hours North of Toronto in the middle of nowhere. Like if you said esports there still, they have no idea what you're talking about type thing. And, um, <laughs> I, I too, like, I uh, got hit by an ATV when I was six, or no, I was on my ATV and I got hit by a truck when I was 16. It was like the summer of grade 10 going into grade 11. And I broke my leg and I was in a wheelchair my whole grade 10 summer. And like, oh, it was like a horrible experience. But it was like, when I finally got out of that, I was like, I couldn't wait to run again and walk because it was like, that could have changed my life forever. And then uh, I moved to the, I don't know, the west coast of Canada just for job opportunities and stuff but uh i was a stupid kid and started making a lot of money really quickly and bought a new car and <laughs> bad, bad choices so but i always wanted to do like backpacking around europe and stuff so like the the thought that you like were like hey i'm just gonna live out my car and and go see how life goes that's i, I think that's pretty sick i'm I yeah it's cool fun. i mean I don't know if my dog's my dog's not in my office right now, but yeah. my dog has been to thirty states. I mean, so we've uh, I've been to all fifty now, but my goal is to get my dog to to all at least the contingent forty eight. Yeah. But um, I'm with you, man. I, I love that traveling aspect. I loved the just being free, and and honestly, yeah. I love Canada in that same regard. I want to go do the same thing up in Canada. I've always wanted to like drive to Alaska. I think that'd be sick. But yeah, I've uh, yeah, it's different. <laughs> I've visited. Um... 11 out of the 12 provinces and i haven't been to any of the territories in canada but i've driven across canada from ontario to where i am alberta 
mm-hmm. five times my, by myself, and that's a 36-hour drive. And every, <laughs> every time I've done it, I have not slept in the middle. So it's been literally 36 hours of nonstop driving other than getting gas or stopping for food or whatever. Like, it, I got uh, the trooper. Oh, dude, the, like... First of all, the first th- three providence- provinces that you drive through are all just prairies. So it's just straight. There's nothing to see, really. <laughs> you're, you're going, and then you hit, like, Ontario, and it's just, like, windy, beautiful rocks and roads. <laughs> and then, like, if I were to have gone more west to BC, I would have started in the mountains and been another beautiful drive. But for, whatever, 18 of those hours, it's like, I'm going to fall asleep if I don't. <laughs> yeah <laughs> if i'm not doing For something real. but uh, what uh, uh what area do you live in in canada um calgary um so it's okay yeah yeah so the stampede yeah hell yeah hell yeah the stampede <laughs> yeah i was born in, born in calgary i was raised here for 12 years and then moved to ontario for high school um and lived awesome. in the middle of nowhere country boy for five six years and then moved back what to what would the Calgary CDL team be named? Hey, funny story is after I didn't get the, well, before and after I didn't get the job at Minnesota Rock, right? I had decks built. I went to the Calgary Flames, which is our NHL team. And I went to their parent company and I laid it out and I said, like, this is the new thing. Get into it now. It's like, kids will, will always like hockey, but kids are going to love esports and it's just going to keep growing they didn't believe me they didn't care they didn't whatever <laughs> um i i like That's ran I, I ran events i ran uh a, what was it an nhl 2017 event for them did like all the prep work found like volunteers did all this stuff for them and they paid us a thousand dollars which they didn't even originally they originally wanted to do it for me to do it for free um they, that's awesome they, they wanted me to give like there was like a bunch of stuff and then like i wrote a whole deck of like how to properly do that like events and stuff and like gave them like a breakdown of costs of like you can rent the stuff but you're probably going to want to buy it if you're doing multiple events and whatever <laughs> and they, they were like yeah yeah this is too expensive we'll never do anything like this a year later like the layout of my like plan for one of their events they they, they like stole it word for word and like made an event from it i was like oh yeah cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah lots of learning experiences but uh i have no idea what it would be called to be honest i was thinking about that the, a while ago and i'm just like it's always like calgary stampede so it's like we have the Calgary Flames because we're all about oil. This is like the El- Canadian version of Texas where I live, well, except right now because we have nobody wants it from us. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh man! Yeah. Like, well, yeah. You got to think of a name. That's sick, though. That's really cool. Someone yeah. said uh, a lot of balls to do that. Good for him. That's so true, though. That's that's very badass, man. That's what. Yeah. Again, that's I know I keep saying that's what esports is, but I that's always, what this is. I always like it's it's so weird. So I've like run so many like like local events but it's never been like enough for me i'm always like i want to do the big thing you know what i mean i want to be a part of the the global scene i don't want to be always that local guy just throwing this the events that are still needed community is important like but i wanted to do it on the, the global scale where it was like people know the brand i'm working for in minnesota or lot wherever you know what i mean and that was always like kind of been always my goal is to if I'm building a community, it's on top of a brand that people are actually going to care about long term. For sure. It's, that's it. That's what it's all about, though. Yeah. It's a good, good thing. To, yeah, good, good morals to be built on. And, uh, you know, a lot of uh, there's a lot of opportunities out there right now. And I think there's a lot of opportunity for people that think like that, man. And yeah. uh, that's important. That's really important. Yeah. So once you got at Minnesota, like, how was it? How was it like when you got with Minnesota Rocker, you guys Un- unleash the brand to the world you guys started doing the the parties and then you guys did the home or sorry the the first event for the for the cdl i didn't get to be there what was your I know. experience you, you were gonna see you would have stayed on my couch man i would have let no, you that was for the second event the first event i was like oh yeah. that's me that's right that's yeah right. the first event i was like i was like oh it t- came too quickly i was like i wasn't ready for that i was like but then i saw that there was another one i was like dude i'll come I'll come. And you're like, yeah, you got a spot. And then you like message me a week later. You're like, don't book anything. <laughs> Cause it was like the COVID stuff. It was coming on. Yeah. Um, no man, it was, it was, uh, I mean, 
a dream come true, honestly, to get the the, the opportunity. Um, I keep saying the opportunity because it's it truly is an opportunity. Um, but starting up right away, we were all in the the WeWork um, the WeWork office downtown, which was really fun. Yeah, um, it was a good spot. We were in. It was like a. I'm sure people have talked about it, but it was like twenty by twenty, maybe not even twenty by ten setup. Um, just getting out there, and they they welcomed me, and I was the I was the last. Um, I was the last guy to be hired for a little while. So, you know, a bunch of the people that were already there and already grinding and working really hard, um, yeah. they welcomed me, which was, you know, it's still testament to them these days. So um, from there, though, I was pretty much thrown into it. Um, I was brought on initially as a contractor. So just to basically what I was already doing, being a consultant. Um, yeah. And I was brought in to essentially just get us ready for lunch. Uh, and I yeah. definitely wasn't the one getting us ready. People were uh, doing this stuff. I was hopefully just, again, coordinating. But um, it was fun. We we planned everything. These uh, Again, this crew is um, it's legendary. It's honestly oh, a legendary yeah. crew. So it was fun, though. It's been fun. It's continued to be fun. It was a crazy time right away. Uh, yeah, it's like it's people saying missing, missing events. Uh, <laughs> those are definitely things that I'm looking forward to again because launch was – a blast an absolute blast yeah yeah i i wish i could see it but that's what i i can't wait till we can get back to that as like the the events because like those are like i've i've been to numerous events but like the last one i went to was um cdl or cwl sorry las vegas which was when united wow. be no um i think united won that i think it was united verse optic the old optic in the finals yep. it was an amazing time i i just i was like man i miss it's a it, different man. energy it's, it's a true energy yeah it's, it's a different a energy, true energy. Yeah. like there's nothing mm-hmm. like it. like where i am is like there's gamers here there's a lot of people who love league of legends there's a lot of fighting games are huge in like the city i live in but there's not the call of duty scene like mm. like we know there is like all over twitter and stuff and to go to an event where everybody's kind of like there's always the dickhead but like everybody's chill everybody's there for the same reason because they love the same things and it's like people you can legit like talk to and make friends with who enjoy exactly the same thing you do and understand what you're talking about when you're talking about esports or or call of duty and the competitive side of it it's just it's it's so much fun there's always the parties there's people who i don't know just such a good time and yeah it's a huge vibe and i can't wait we're just talking about that I don't remember who I think it was I feel like we've been talking about it like each day here. Yeah. Um yeah, like Sam and Jamma just said. But like that's that's the that's my favorite part about um esports and honestly gaming in general. But I had a buddy that just came by yesterday and we know each other from old jobs and, and yeah. work and whatever else, but he was saying how he's been playing um more video games inside, but he was talking about Resident Evil Seven and I'm yeah. like like I, you very rarely meet someone where you it's it's different than movies different than tv shows where with call of duty specifically the way you can bond with someone just with the drama of day-to-day social media yeah. the way the way it works is is what i always tell my buddies to do first is to just dive into social media um oh. like like that go to an event um and it's real it's so real like you said the energy is so much different than a traditional sporting event where yes there's passion of course but a lot of those people are just there because they got tickets from something or, you know, yeah. the true passion of people, young people paying money to go see something that they enjoy. Um, that's so, that like means a lot. That's like kind of moving. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, I know. And like to go see something, but let alone like you walk into that. Like, I, I don't know how it was this year with the, the challengers, but the open bracket back in the day when it was literally like some pro teams were fighting through the, the open bracket to get a place in the call of duty league at the time or the the pro league was insane like the the things that you saw and like the group the mass of people when you walked into that auditorium or wherever they were holding the the open bracket and there's probably 400 sweaty kids who forgot to put on deodorant and they're all grinding yelling at each other across the tables and stuff it is amazing to see like you wish they'd put deodorant on but you're like (laughs) <laughs> i love the energy in this room <laughs> oh man it's a good way to put it though like you said 
just people grinding. They brought like I mean, and what you're talking about is probably a little more dating us, right? A little more back yeah, in the yeah. day. But people bringing their own stuff, man. Like I love seeing when they got their monitor under one arm, their console. Like yeah. you know, it's it's so much more real. Yeah, um, that hasn't happened. I don't think. Um, yeah, but <laughs> I know. But yeah, but yeah, but that happens a lot still for like PC events. But but for console events, I don't think that happens as much. But. Yeah, I've been to a few events where it's like you see the guy coming in with his two thousand dollar PC and his monitor in his hand, and you're like, "Oh, you really hope you're not slipping right now? You're like, cost That's cost right. yourself the event plus your PC." Oh, that man. is right. Yeah, someone someone Sam and Jam was saying uh, deodorant company doing activations on site would be gold. That's funny. That's dead on. Just oh, have like the uh, the bowl of deodorant, right? The the, oh, the sponsorship. Yeah, dude. I like. There's always like that open thing of like. <laughs> red bull or or whatever the energy drink is but dude old spice should go in there and just have one of those cans full of de- like the mini deodorant travel deodorants and just like, please put it on like you know yeah. <laughs> it's, i love it man oh dude it's i it's love it crazy man. like you said it's it's called duty if, if it's toxicity it's it's that too it's all those things so i uh i love it man i love it there's something about it i miss yeah. i miss land events yeah Do you, did you ever so like when when did you kind of like hear about esports and stuff? Was it pre Rocker where you kind of like started getting into it? Yeah, unfortunately, not as much as like I, I probably could have. It's gonna sound I don't know. Maybe maybe you can relate too. But growing up, um, I was I was a big time gamer. Yeah. Uh, my uncle worked for Microsoft back when it was like cool to say you had an uncle that worked at Microsoft, right? And, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he works on Xbox, so we would get the new console every year. Um, but I was sort of like a closet gamer. I don't think – because I was a, I was a big-time athlete. I, yeah, I yeah. was a decent student. Um, yeah. And it was weird to, you know, go home and then tell my buddies that I just played Halo until like 4 a.m. the next day. And, and <laughs> it was still weird, right? It was still off. But I, I honestly knew all about it um, and I, I wish I knew more about like the Call of Duty scene specifically yeah. because I feel like – once I heard about it, once I saw how, I don't know, it was I was fascinated with it. I, I pretty much got into it in like, mm, probably unfortunately like IW. But Bob's Four was when Black Ops Four was when I really really watched the whole season. Yeah. I really liked the the champs was insane. Yeah, um, yeah. So that was when I really got into specifically Call of Duty esports. But from yeah. there, it was just an avalanche, honest, absolute avalanche. I got in at the end, the like. The season had ended for Black Ops 2. And that's yeah. when I got in. And so I believe the next game was Ghost. And that was like when big things were happening and it was like people were getting dropped here and there. And that was like, like I found it through a friend who showed me a nade, nade shot video. And it's always, a lot of people, <laughs> it's always like if they're back then, it was like, oh, they found it through Nade Shot or Scump on YouTube. And it was like, yeah, Nade Shot's videos and his like, whatever and that's when i found it and then i was like oh, i want to compete but like i'd been playing games again my whole life too and i was just like i wish i would have known about this like <laughs> four years ago like middle of high school but it was like 100 it was like the year after i got out of high school it was like i know i'd probably it, yeah it was probably yeah i was like 17 turning 18 probably 18 yeah right? Oh, that's what i always think of is is being able to compete i wish i would have liked it more and had like the balls to talk to my parents like uh the silly video i don't know if you remember that video with him and his dad where yeah. they would travel around to go to you know stay in hotels and compete i'm like i don't know my little brother was really good too yeah. um i wish there would have been more of an opportunity with that so now i'm really excited to be a part of like college and high school outreach you know like that's one of the things yeah. that i'm super passionate about and giving kids the opportunity to feel like you know one of the the crews we talked to, <clears throat> excuse me, yeah, um, no he was telling me, um, one of the coaches was telling us about how he had to like explain to the parents that he had gotten a, um, their son had gotten a full ride scholarship for um, League of Legends or Dota oh, yeah. or one of the two. Yeah. And the mom and the dad, like they couldn't understand, like they literally couldn't understand it. They're like, what do you mean? He sits downstairs, he plays computer games all day. Like, what do you mean he has a scholarship and something? And like, they're like, well, that's like, that's what he's getting the scholarship for. And they're, you know, it, it yeah. was, it's just cool to hear that stuff. And I wish there's more opportunities like that for kids and, you know, we can make it more accessible or, you know, equipment's expensive. So is there a way to level some of those costs? Um, yeah. Those are things that I think about all the time and what my dreams, like personally, I want to, I want to work towards long-term. Yeah. It's, it's so, 
one of those things are especially now compared to when nade shot and all those people started when the industry was like nothing and they were doing it for free and built up to these million dollar four million dollar events is like like what all these kids are coming in and they see this now and the parents are mm-hmm. still learning about it and don't know i remember when i told my mom like i wanted to go well that i was playing with people online in tournaments and like winning the odd little tournament here and there and she didn't really yeah. understand what was going on she was worried that i was spending too much time just on my computer or of course. didn't understand it until i was able to be like this isn't very much but here's a little bit of the money i made i or running an event and being called by like i got um halo is before call of duty i was really into the halo scene and i've got a mm. lot of ties to the halo scene and so um i built like the local halo scene here in calgary um over the last five years ish and uh, probably four anyways doesn't matter um and microsoft and whatever finally noticed and i got like flown to austin texas two years ago to, or like a year and a half ago to to watch a halo event and they i was a vip for the event and it was them just saying thank you for continuing the halo stuff it's, it's no way crazy. i didn't know that that's unreal how yeah, is that yeah. true that was amazing. They paid for the flight. They paid for the hotel. I, I breakfast every morning at the hotel was free. They had lunches in the back of the because it was an event. So like everybody in the back got got lunches and stuff like that. So I like I didn't have to pay for free anything. Lunch? I was yeah. I was literally just paying for alcohol at night until like it was it was great. It was during South by Southwest, so there was like a huge party going on every night. It, it was so much fun. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, so it's it's interesting to see where people come in because there's a lot of people now that are like sure. in the scene that like didn't know about it back back then or like found it along the way but like mm-hmm. didn't get to see like the beginning like the the small growth of esports. I, I, well, that's that's where we're headed to next. You know, it's crazy that everybody always talks about that like five and the ten year and all that bit, but. You know, there's just this bubble. There's this huge bubble right now. And the next generation, um, you know, I'm 28, so I'm old as, you know, old as fuck in this industry. So yeah, me too. The, next, yeah, the next generation is, they're, they're already doing it. You know, they're already, they're already spending more time on things like Discord and Twitter. And, and yeah. they're, they're already being active on Twitch. They're all streaming. You know, it's, yeah. just, it's just this little bubble between, you know, the correlation between executives at a high level understanding what this is and the people that are going to topple this industry and turn it into something into like truly truly amazing especially in the united yeah. states right especially at na but it's exciting man it's exciting to be a part of excited you know talk with anyone about these types of things especially those people that understand it i mean it's a different world i was talking with a buddy the other day about the nfl again and they he always you know nfl yeah. owns a day of the week like you know, and I'm I'm like, dude, yeah. I'll pull up XQC right now. He's got sixty thousand avid fans watching him at eleven PM at night play a game with cartoon ghosts and posters. Like yeah, you yeah. know, it's a different level of marketing and, and a, specified a, influencing that we're seeing right yeah, now. It's a different type of entertainment. And a lot of people 100%. people don't understand that. It's it's hard to even explain to people who don't understand it. It's, <laughs> right. they're, they're like, Why are you watching that person play a video game why don't you just go play it yourself it's like you're not really watching the video game you're watching the person that is entertaining you playing a video game oh, that's it's, right it's like- i used to be that weird kid that would i didn't mind watching my buddies play and i didn't know why i didn't really mind watching you know and now i mean now i get it i just liked watching people play video games man, yeah. especially when they're good right so yeah i totally i totally see that man i totally see that and yeah. for me right now it's like uh if it's competitive, like I, I love watching it, but then nothing makes me want to do like watching competitive makes me just want to play. It just makes me want to be like, yeah. I want to go to an event. I want to show people what I can do. I want to be the best person in that lobby, even though I'm probably not. It's one of the <laughs> hardest parts about this industry, honestly, man, is that, um, as you guys, some of you know, I, I work in our, our chats a lot. I'm a moderator and an admin in a lot of our um, different platforms. Um, Is that why I keep getting banned? And exactly. Just, just get him out of here type of thing. Dude, he's but talking again. Just... Time him out. 
<laughs> but what what I've I've had this talk with a number of people, even people in 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 chat here, of course, too. But um, yeah. just how interesting that aspect of of a sport that we care a lot about is is this like chat aspect where you're cheering a virtual sport and just how you know that that angle is such a bizarre angle itself um it's almost it's almost weird to correlate all of this in a comparison with yeah. something like esports you know it's hard to compare traditional sports to esports when innately they are completely different even though they're really we're really trying to be similar you know what i mean it's kind of a kind of an interesting thought process in my opinion at least as these next you know these people that consume this product so much um get older get into jobs get into things like that it's yeah. just um it's very interesting to me yeah um with like the like the one thing that i i compare like it to is like say you have like season tickets to a nfl teams games or whatever and you're going and so you like you recognize a couple of the people around you slowly because like you're going to every game and these people have season tickets beside you and you start chatting with them well now you don't need to spend the thousands of dollars on a season's ticket you go into a chat with it where you're watching the game you're cheering on your favorite team and you're just starting to recognize names that are constantly in chat or recognizing people on twitter who are constantly like talking about your team that's your favorite team and saying like they're it's their favorite team too so then they're, they're talking like when you guys started the discord there there's people i had no idea about beforehand who are like they're not big in the scene or anything but they're fans of minnesota rocker and so i am friends with them now because of that relationship we built through that chat oh, that. that's that's you and me that's sam in our chat that's like wicked chaos who who's always ch there's like a, a thousand different names that you you see and you like you may not know that person but if that person comes up to you at the next minnesota event you know that person enough to be like, "What's good, brother? Like, mm -hmm. how are you doing?" So yeah, like, that's 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 the like disconnect of like real sports to this is it's like maybe that'd be different if Twitch or NFL and Twitch signed a deal where every Thursday night, literally Twitch streams the NFL, and then you start seeing names like that in that, which is the way I believe it'll go, and I believe you think yep. the same way, um, but until that gets to that point people will always move to where they think they're getting making better connections with people through esports or gaming it's or a great whatever. point the joke that i i mean it wasn't necessarily a joke it was honestly sort of a fact but um we're doing the launch event because people were amazed at you know 10 12 000 people coming through a venue in a weekend and one of the ways that i thought it was you know funny was that it was a you know a massive amount of introverts all coming out to be extroverted right like yeah that's what we all were and we all are and maybe didn't understand it as much but man like getting a bunch of people that are knowledgeable about something that they care about uh it's super fun like yeah. it's just something that you've never seen before especially when it comes to live yeah. events uh an esport event is completely different than anything i've ever seen yeah and and people call pe like gamers introverts and some people i'm sure are but a lot of them they're talking right. to people all the time there is not one night usually that if i'm sitting at my computer i'm not in a discord call with numerous friends you know what i mean they're playing games we're playing games together or i just, just stop in to say hi or i'm chatting with people just through the thousand different discords that i'm in or or twitter conversations like there is so much more communicating and like as one of the rocker people gary v has said and stuff it's like people say that this generation isn't socializing more but that's the complete opposite from people who are in I the agree. scene seeing the conversations happening i agree yeah i think the way that we utilize social media is so different than what people think the way we utilize you know what i mean yeah. it's just it's it's a part of our worlds like I, I always laughed at my uncles or my aunts that are like taking away their ipads from their little kiddos and everything instead of letting him try to learn how to code on an ipad or something like yeah. they just are so ingrained to that being a video game or whatever yeah and yeah i i find it fascinating man i find it fascinating yeah what's uh are you are you excited about your new roster of course yeah, yeah of course man these guys are nasty they're absolutely nasty i miss the i miss the old roster though like i i yeah i i always do try to make note of that because i am emotionally not ready to have to like 
yeah. do that year after year. That would be impossible to do. No, uh, um, no. they were the best. They they are the best. They're the best dudes ever. Um, but this 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 new crew is uh, they're gonna be nasty in the four v four formats. Nasty. I mean, it'll be a lot of fun. I think people are excited about it too. Which I'm so excited. That's four v four. That's the point. Back. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so hard because it's like, especially with how Minnesota is and. You, like you guys spent all year building this brand around these names and then you're just like sorry these these names are no longer here it's hard for the community to be like oh that's like what the hell's going on yeah and don't then, put that on me don't put uh, that no, on no, 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 I'm, no, I'm no, just no, kidding no, I, uh, <laughs> no, no, no I'm with I, you though I'm it's one though. of those things where it's like I understand what's happening and like maybe that team was just like there were things that happened where they were like we're just not gonna team together next year mm -hmm. that's that happens. It happen it's happened for years in Call of Duty. But you what you hope is that this will like slowly become where it's like maybe next year two of the players stay. You know what I mean? And then you have those people that are like you're following their story along and, and at least have at least one person that'll stay and kind of build a legacy under the brand. Kind of like Scump and Huntsman slash Optic. Like mm -hmm. you, you have these names that stick with brands. Now, I know this is, doesn't matter anymore. You guys have announced your roster, but I was praying that you guys got Clayster. <laughs> just, <Yeah. laughs> just for the storylines, just for the like fact that like he was looking for a long-term like goal type thing. I was just like, man, if Clayster got on Rocker and stayed for the long thing and they built a roster around him, that would be a team. I love Clayster. I think he's Krim would never let him live it down. Krim would never let him live, live it down. No, I'm just kidding. I like, Clay, Clayster's now. I mean, yeah. I, there's so many guys. That's what is really tough about this too, man, is that um, the switch back to 4v4 format, um, I saw, where was it? Yeah, Coach Coach Cheeto, actually, I like that, the 4 plus 1 live. Coach, even, like, there's there's the 4v4 part of Call of Duty, I think, is so important. The, the tough part, though, is that switching from 5v5 to 4v4 after a year is a massive change for these guys that are at a very high level and now have to compete again you know for another spot like it, it just yeah. is a very tough spot for a world that um you know you have an mvp winning that came from another game like it's it's just it's so competitive when it comes to shooters um especially at a high level you know tier blank esport whatever you want to call it it's, yeah it's insane i i think a lot of it too is that like not all the teams have a lot of experience dealing with said players right so they they may have just gotten to this le league last year and really don't know enough about the players to be like making decisions about when the game switches every year do we drop our whole roster every year and wait to see who who kind of shows up you know like it, it's definitely a lot diff difficult if, or it's really difficult if if you don't know enough about the players and then it's like you when when teams have locked in players and they've dropped one player and then you're trying to build a team around certain players that won't like as much as you want to say is like there are friendships there that some people won't will not play together well and that will ruin a team so you have like right. pe people you're trying to build through this web of different players and it's hard especially if you're waiting so long yeah, it's impossible man dude, it's, dude it's, i it's like crazy people reddit went ham on this new rocker team they they thought they were like oh parista deserves something better attached should be somewhere else it's like dude you're looking at two players that were on the top three team all year last year and then two players that came from a team that it had a slow start but just ramped it up and it's attach and freaking accuracy and they're good players and have been quality players through their whole careers and people are complaining about the team i couldn't I'll never understand it. <laughs> it's okay. I'll, yeah, I'll never understand. It's it. Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. And people always but have something it. to complain about. But you, you just like they're fans of Attach and want to see him on phase. You know what I mean? They're fans of whoever and they want to see him on on their favorite brand. And maybe that's not Rocker right now, but it will be, or they will follow that player because it's their favorite player. So, oh, well, that's that's a that's another really cool angle you bring up that um, I think traditional sports again are starting to see more and more of. I actually saw a LinkedIn post the other day, and I know BZ has shared it before, but it was that um, I think it was a Juju Smith Schuster uh, scoring a touchdown, and he was like smiling like by the touch like the pylon kid, yeah. and um, the the team retweeted it with like Monday mood or something, you know, and yeah. then. 
Ju- uh, Juju Smith. Uh, I'm just gonna call him Juju. Like yeah, I, yeah, yeah. that that name. I know impossible. who you. I know who you're talking. <laughs> yeah, J- JJSS. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. He retweeted it, and the engagement was massive. It had like a hundred retweets or yeah. whatever. Five, you know, five thousand retweets instead of the team getting like a couple hundred retweets or whatever. So, yeah. you know, I think it, it just shows how much um, personal brands are important, man. So much more so than ever, you know, it's, it's so oh, much more. And to see these athletes streaming and to doing, doing things like that is really exciting. Um, yeah. Cause just, esports is already there. They're just, they're just racking. Well, a lot of esports. I, the one thing I will say, I, I love the old roster and I, I made friends with a lot of them. And like, I mm-hmm. silly is a good guy and stuff. A lot of them, I, I was like, man, you guys should be like cranking out content on your own channels. Mm-hmm. And it's like, like, I, I reached out to Silly and he never responded. Whatever, but I DM'd. Him, I was like, "Yo, if you want somebody to look after your YouTube channel, like help you with it, I'll do it. Like I'll spend, like pay me whatever, or whatever. Like don't pay me, but I will go through your stream and et- find videos for you just so that you're putting stuff up because like that is increasing. Like if you're getting a hundred thousand views on a YouTube video and you're putting that out every a weekly, even." That yep. bumps up how much you're worth to a team. You're bringing fan base that are going to buy merch. They're going to support you. They're going to go do whatever to support that team because you're on it. And That's right. I think it's true, man. It's very true. There's a lot of players like that. Though. It's not. It wasn't just Minnesota. I mean, no, no. And I think you said it though. Like the, our guys, you know. That, that's not a knock on them by any means. No, that's, no, that's, no, no. That's who they are as people. They were great. Yeah. They're great. They were a great land team. They're good teammates. They're really good. Um, you know, they're brothers essentially now. And to your point, though, the, the thing that's interesting and, and technically different is um, how these, these, you know, the new guys have come in. Um even the way that they are carrying themselves in a live podcast is a bit different. You know, like things like that are just, it's a transition. And, and in a world where, Twitter and TikTok and Instagram are, are all running the show um, and people are making brands out of themselves just yeah. on war zone clips. Like that's yeah. hard to compete with. It's hard to say like you shouldn't be doing that. It's no, definitely I, something that should be happening. Exactly. I, I'm hating myself for like my friend, he posts on TikTok all the time, his clips. And I'm like, I should be doing this, but I just like, I, I'm not. Yeah, when you start, I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, nobody should not be doing like everybody should be doing it. And, that's one thing I was like, I was like, bro, the amount of like just fans that this new team is gonna bring through like Priest's TikTok. I think he hit like five hundred thousand or a million followers on TikTok. Like, yep. Like they they Priest was, is the kick, TikTok king, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and like so they're they're all like building their own brands to make it worthwhile, which makes Minnesota Rocker look better to their fans. Well, it lives longer too. I mean, quite frankly. Yeah. Uh, You'll move teams. Um, I think, I don't know if it was Sam or Jamma and Chad or who was saying it. It was probably Sammy. But that was, uh, yeah, CDL fans follow players, not brands. Like, it's True. it's part of this whole thing. You know, I remember how many fans, I mean, LeBron's the prime example. Like, LeBron goes to Miami, no one cares. He's still LeBron. People love LeBron. Yeah. They're going to love LeBron. They're going to love him when he goes to the Lakers. Like, yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just the reality of things now. And that's one of the things I like to bring up about our guys specifically um, is, oh, and not our guys, but like Call of Duty players specifically is yeah. like how massive their following is compared to someone in a traditional sport, like an Aaron Rodgers or anything even. Like yeah. these big name guys, even, you know, mid-level guys on the Vikings or Packers or something, our, our eSport guys are going to have more followers than them for sure. Like, Almost yeah. not a doubt in my mind. A lot yeah, of times, too. A, a majority of them will, yeah. And they, they, but they started. Twitter was like, for Call of Duty at least, was was the main like chat room. You know what I mean? Like CS:GO had mm-hmm. its had its like ESEA chat rooms and like places where you'd go and and find people to play with. That was Twitter for Call of Duty. So so a lot of the pros and stuff like that they fe- they they started on Twitter and they were there before any of the big like nfl players or anything were there so yeah they're... it's true we were at a bar i don't know we were at a bar one time uh so he's wearing his mask like yeah. covered up hat on and um the bartender recognized him like you know he, it's just his like his he's got a signature look yeah, yeah he just looks he and she's like are you silly and <laughs> she but she also knew um 
uh she had seen like asia and yeah. their covers but like that's it man they're a brand they're they're a walking brand already and it's cool it's really uh it's really 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 cool yeah it's such a different world it is it's so fun i love every part of it i, I every, just... <laughs> every day i wish i was like more in the scene you know what i mean like just because i'm just like i can assume i can i love like seeing things from the outside and like thinking about what i would do in that position but i want to be in there where i like know things and just can't say shit <laughs> yeah, you're getting there man yeah. you're doing this this is important like i i don't know i mean yes we're we're, we're at a org it's a franchise it's cool like but I, I really think how like this stuff is so important i mean i i like to use the example of those media guides that bz and i would make um where it has the players, you know, and it would be like looking yeah. ahead, the schedule, the tournament weekend. Um, we get all those stats from Easy Mac and Cam Allen. Like, those are guys in the community yeah. that just do what they love, and I trust them. So I use their work yeah. in an official publication. Like, you know, the stuff you're doing, a podcast, um, you know, I catch up with Sammy all the time. Those are, that's what's moving the industry. It's not having like the cool fancy job title and i don't even have a cool fancy job title like i told you before the call like i'm just marketing guy right so it's okay but hey, um we're all doing it we're all doing it uh that was like i have no marketing degree but that's what i wanted to get into i was like i want to be marketing and content for esports i don't care if i'm on the the cdl side or a brand right. side <laughs> like i'd rather be with a brand because then i really can cheer them on and whatever but like I just I just wanted to be like I I was talking to Sam too because me and Sam have plans that we're not going to talk about right now because it's not ready but we had we had plans and we were talking about it and he's going to school for his uh, marketing stuff and I was like I was like I've been looking into it because it's like I apply for these marketing jobs and I I have no experience like I don't have real experience with a with a large corporation or the um the degree or diploma that says. I was trained and he's like dude this diploma is so outdated and that, i've heard that numerous times but it's like without um proving yourself some other way or or having like people on the inside that are like he's he knows what he's talking about it, it it's so hard to say to somebody it's like you want to be in marketing this is the way you do it <laughs> you know what i mean right. <laughs> like you want to you want to be in esports this is the route you need to take it just there's there's no written way still to do it there's all these esports programs coming out that are written by people who i don't know if they've ever even worked in esports <laughs> they're just they just saw an opportunity to to put it in a school and was like i know what i'm talking right. about <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no i mean that's and i'm not too i i think that college degrees are important you know your diploma is important um but there is something to be said for just being able to fucking youtube or google anything these days man i mean i i don't know if the fact that i lived in a car and you know pitched businesses like that i don't think was that enticing to brett and or any or anyone you know what i mean i think that what was enticing was you know the stuff you're talking about like the passion the knowledge the ability to take and learn quickly um it's cool. I mean, that's that's why we're all good at this. You know, it's a lean industry. It's it's um, there's a lot going on all the time. Yeah. Uh, you never know what might happen every day, and and that's again why we why we do these things. So I was I thought you were about to I thought you were about to break some massive news I didn't even know about right away. I was ready for some spoiler alerts. Oh, I didn't know. Oh no 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 no. Well, From I mean, Sam. Uh, no no no. Me and Sam, we we got. We're a little ways out, but you know he's blushing at home. Are he's blushing in he's Norway like, he's right like, now? He's like, dude, he's like, dude, shut your mouth. No, he's no. rattled. Yeah. No, of course not. <laughs> no, we're we're just uh, we both have the same kind of ideas, and you know, what's well, all of us, man? All of us. Yep, it's why bro, we catch up. It's why we do these. So, bro, I I love just talking about esports. Like when I the problem with sometimes with me with e talking about esports is like if i'm talking to somebody who has no idea what i'm talking about and i'm like getting really passionate about it and like emotion like not a, like emotional like crying but like they can like you can just feel the passion in what i'm talking about and they're like i still have no idea what you're talking about i'm like i don't know I how know. to explain this to you anyway any other way <laughs> i know i know man my little brother sells like he doesn't sell anything. He's an engineer, but he works for like a plant that sells like plastics or something. Like it's, it's, I'm sure it's fascinating to him. I have no idea 
what he does. Like, I, I don't, and he gets so fired up talking about stuff sometimes, and I'm just like, it's yeah. lovely, man. Like, that is, I'm with you, I'm tracking. Uh, but that's, and again, I think that the difference, you know, the joke that we all say is that you can hop into COD Twitter tomorrow, tonight, you know, and start to get involved and enjoy it. You can watch old VODs. I always tell people to go back and watch because I was partial to it, but um, watching uh, Black Ops 4 uh, Champs Weekend, just start to finish. Watch, like, Just oh, United yeah. or Just 100 Thieves. Like, you, you'll you fall in love with, like, a specific player or, you know, for me it was ironically dashy. I don't know why. He just, like, seemed cool to me, so I liked yeah. him a lot. And then obviously Simp. Like, Bruce. Simp was this, like, yeah, exactly. The, the Bruce thing's hard to deny. And it was just, it's a fun thing to just get into that, I don't know, I never got like that with traditional sports. Um, no, I never, like, just went the rabbit holes of, like, football or, or soccer or no. anything. So I don't know why it is with video games or with esports, but there's always, always, I always think something. I think it's because it's so easy to follow storylines of players, right? Like, everybody has their favorite player on their sports team or whatever. Like, being Canadian and hockey and whatever, it's like my favorite team was Calgary Flames because that's where I grew up. And everybody loved Dro McGinley. But do I know a backstory? Again, to Again, the hell yeah, bro. Yeah. But, but did anybody, but, did anybody, did I know the backstory to Aginla? No, I just knew that he played in Calgary most of his career. And that was enough for me. Like, he was our yeah. star player, and that's all you had to go off of. And the little skit things that they did sometimes to, like, kind of introduce the player. But, right. like, <laughs> but, but these players, you can go on Octane's Twitter and follow his career if you go back far enough and see <laughs> see where see where he started see like what upset him see like his passion and like when mm-hmm. he changed teams and like when he was doing well and so you can like feel for that player compared to yeah compared to these NFL players that you're like yeah I know he's good I know he can throw a 300 yard pass or whatever you know what I mean like you know yep. he he's a good player but you don't that's all you care about is him performing. Whereas, like, you get emotionally attached to, to who was it? Dashy again. Like, if we talk about him from this past COD Champs, he was on the bench. Nobody, <laughs> nobody even thought anything about it. Or they're like, "How do you put Dashy on the bench?" Like, that's a, whatever. And then all of a sudden, I didn't. Was, I'm not a fan of the new optic, but Dashy's out in the middle of an S and D game five. You have to cheer for him. And then he he performed, and he, it just built on his storyline that you were just like he came out, and I, I loved Twitter at that day because it was like he rolled out of bed for a five hundred thousand dollar game five S and D, and it was just like you wanted to cheer him on. You didn't. It wasn't your favorite team. You didn't really uh-huh. care. You didn't care if they won or not. But as soon as he came out, you're like, dude, if he pulls this off, that is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, dude, you nailed it. I mean, how I, I just remember the it was the gif of him uh, that he tweeted where it's just the Joe Burrow like smoking a huge stove walking <laughs> yeah. after the national championship. He's just like, what? What? Yeah, man? Yeah, I, yeah. It was like whatever they said. It was like a twelve k round of S and D or whatever, like or a, whatever hundred twenty k. Yeah, it was like round of S and D for him. So <laughs> so cool, man. It's, it's so cool. It's hard to fathom and to hear those those. Like he got a text saying, "Like, can you be up by like one p.m. because you may be a sub?" Like, yeah, the storylines are unbelievable, man. The thirty for thirties opportunities in esports are don't even get me started, man. They're uh, endless. There's always something ridiculous. What? Do you, what? Something I want to see more of in the, like the future as the CDL improves is the use of substitutes like Dashy in that mm-hmm. instance, but in normal like. S and D comes out, you swap out a player for S and D or whatever. Because I just think, I don't know, you, you don't want to do that to like the players who want to mm-hmm. compete the whole thing. But at the end of the day, that's like a new version of how you could play the game, and it still gets right. you the win. Uh, I think it's. I think it'll happen eventually, man. It'll just take like. Yeah. It'll just take someone doing it consistently yeah. for people to be like, it's actually like a DH type of move, you know, like. Yeah. It, 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 I'm with you though. I think it's interesting that it's not used more often, especially when um, you have the opportunity to use a sniper on a search and destroy. Route. Like there's there's such little dynamics like that. That yes, this year was a very weird year, man. Like using the, the domination chaos was just oh, was... it was bizarre. Like 
So it's tough to like strategize a sub, but if you have something like that, man, I'm I'm totally with you. Um, I, I don't I, see why not. I was not. excited because I thought when when it was announced that Toronto had per, like filled its ten slots, mm -hmm. I thought was, it was gonna be this like oh. I, I yeah I thought I was like and with the players they had I was like okay I can see a opportunity where you swap in the like mm -hmm. these four players with this player for S and D or whatever like. Right. It, it never ended up happening that way, but that's what all, all I could think was like that would that be the so team. Cool. Yeah, it's definitely a strategy behind it too, just for having always an opportunity for scrims. Like, you know, which is I think what a lot of teams underestimated this year is the level of high quality scrimming. So, you know, having a full roster like that, you just continue to go at it. It's like having a full football team. You know, that's uh, that'd be ideal. But yeah, I'm with you, man. It'd be cool. It'd be cool to have some sort of like shootout, you know, ringer type of guy that can yeah. come in and Especially run it. Especially with them changing like the way substitutes work this year where they can play in challengers or something. I don't know why. Well, I know that everybody's focusing on their main team and whatever, but having an academy team or whatever B team that plays the challengers that you can swap players in and out from that roster to to compete like i just think that's that should just be us man just so we'll you me we'll grab some people from chat like sam um let's run it man we yeah. can run it out <laughs> i'm with you man i think it'd be cool i think there's a huge opportunity there i think coaches will you know depending on what the format is like we can say all the buzzwords right what the format's like what the meta yeah. is what the game modes are like it'll at some point it'll happen and it'll turn into more of a coaching strategy match to match game to yeah. game even so, yeah. um it'll be cool it'll be cool though i'm with you though that i wish i would have seen more of that i wish there would have been like full-on like sniper subs in for search and destroy you, rounds whatever you'd it is. think with 5v5 but the problem is is with 5v5 it's just right. i don't know i don't know it just didn't work out that way with 5v5 it's interesting 5v5 uh, was very interesting yes um <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did you play the beta or the alpha? I guess Cold War alpha I did. at all. I did think? I'm juiced, of course. I mean, uh, I was talking about you're like you're hyped because it's new. Yeah. I'm the I'm a kid on Christmas. You know, this time of year. Um, I mean, we're spoiled right now. There's there's 3080s and 3070s and 3060s coming out for your PC. There's Xbox. There's PS. Yeah. Uh, it, it's new games. You know, I used to be a big Madden fan. Madden sucks now, so I don't care about it. But um, when when it's Call of Duty season again, I mean it's Call of Duty season year round. There's no other esport in my opinion that operates like this. But nope. when it's Call of Duty, new Call of Duty season, the the hype is so much fun. Whether or not we hate the next game or love the next game, the, Every, and the everybody hype loves right it at the beginning people. anyway. Every like people always see their issues, but they're like, it's a new game, you know, they'll work it out. But, of course, but, but man, I, I loved hopping into that alpha. It just it kind of reminded me of Ghost and Black Ops. Yep, it's good. Like you had the Black Ops Five, but Ghost wise, oh man, the sound. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited too. It was fun. Of course, there's issues. I want to see more maps. Blah 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 blah. blah but it was just fun, mm -hmm. man. It felt good to not have like the stupid door issues. Like I, I didn't see <laughs> yeah. too many like St. Peter Griffin situations where there's like windows that are shady and like it was good. Yeah, I mean like the one map, whatever it was, Miami was like. The worst of the bunch for sure yeah um but that's just because we're i mean call of duty fans are tried and true like purists like yeah. open three lane maps like without shadows and windows like you know we don't yeah <laughs> i don't know it feels straightforward that, but i'm uh, sure there's, there's always an angle moscow was my favorite map but um, Moscow's map. Yeah. satellite was like one of the it, it was a great pub map i was liked it more and more the more i played it um Right. Uh, but there was like <laughs> I was when they released Hardpoint on the Saturday and me and my friends were playing mm -hmm. and they like you were like kinda explored the map a little bit more because not everybody was just running for B in the middle <laughs> type mm -hmm. thing. Um Especially Moscow. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> that one's uh, so funny because everyone just runs to that statue and then holds a corner. Yeah. Everywhere um, everywhere we went. <laughs> anyway, we were on like the second hard point or whatever already and it was like the one on the Anyway, whatever. It, but my friend's like, oh, I'm up in the window. I got your cover. And I'm like, up in the window? And they're like, in the back of each other map, there's like these buildings that like I didn't even know you could go in. And there was like a window up high. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, okay, well, I, I do like this map, but I, I don't think that needs to be there. That just seems... Yep, exactly. Uh, 
when I did when I didn't know that was there, I already thought the map was good, but now that's there, I'm like, okay, that's a little getting a little much. <laughs> I had a few games too where there I don't know if this was supposed to be in the game, but it was like a little bit of like arena football setup where the the countdown would still be going, but you could start sprinting. Does yeah, that, that, that make sense? Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I don't know if the, I thought that was interesting too, where I was like. All right, well then, just make the levels smaller. Like we don't need the head start. We don't need the spawns yeah. to be all the way back here. I thought that was very interesting. I thought that was kind of weird too. I, I wasn't. Un, I was kind of unsure of why they were. Um, <laughs> I thought the game Throwing broke. I there. thought the game broke too because some people were like, "Were you able to go before me or something?" I'm like, "I don't know. I just started running. I was holding forward. Yeah, and just started moving, and it happened a lot. And I was just like, so oh. maybe it was. Maybe we broke it, right? Yeah, yeah, we broke it. We, dolphin, we, dolphin we, diver for life. That's yeah. Oh, the bro, the dolphin, movement will be back. Dolphin dive, man. Oh, I hated the dolphin dive. I was so excited <laughs> when the slide was back, and then everybody found out how to destroy the slide and make it into you looking like a snake. <laughs> TikTok. Bro. TikTok got it out there. Bro, that was, oh man, what was it? It was like in the first first two hours of the game, I see a clip of Illy being like, yo, look how much faster I can aim in if I slide YY and do this. I'm like, oh no, oh no! Yeah, <laughs> yep. here we go. I also, I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of a sucker for that type of stuff too, though. And that's sometimes uh, people disagree with that take. I'm also firmly on the side of like, I enjoy a new game every year. There's been that talk yeah. a ton, right? Of like, should we keep the same? I think it's a really cool thing that it changes. Um, I'm really a big fan of that. But I think there's something to be said for like skill gapping, like being able to bunny oh, yeah. hop, being yeah. able to do those things. So I, I'm a huge fan of, I, uh, of I movement definitely, mechanics. But me too. yeah, it's interesting. I my favorite Call of Duty of all times, Black Ops Three. Nobody can change my mind about that. I had the most fun in pubs, most fun competitively. I destroyed with the. Uh, what was it? The VMP. I was just about to ask you what your gun was. VMP or the whatever it was the burst gun, yeah, the M8, I believe. Seems like you sure care a ton about it. It's been I'm just kidding. five years. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, for real, man. For real. <laughs> yeah, I know. And we we play them every year, like we were talking about, like the way that they change and the way that they yeah. don't change at the same time um, is why we why we like Call of Duty, why we stick with the sport, why we. Yeah live and die by it every damn day like every season um yeah it's what it's about man it's really what it's, it's all about Bro, uh, I, as much as people say like they didn't like the jump jetpack call of duties some of them were the most fun to watch i mean <laughs> nothing was more entertaining as a third game than uplink nobody like no nothing can change my mind there was nothing like that somebody with him. throwing a ball over a building and then you just see they like flip to somebody's screen you just see that go in and it's like a one point win oh man there were some <laughs> amazing moments in in uplink that will never happen on boots on the ground but i, I was going to say i'm like we're gonna st we'll stir it up with everyone but i'm with you man like i i think people i get i get made fun of not made fun of i guess but like people laugh at my kind of like hippie mentality towards it I, I think they're that's they're all fun in their own way yeah. and the reason that we like them for the time being is because it's the game that we're playing like there's are supposed to be things that aren't as fun like that's just how it works when you're looking for different changes instead of having a stupid like i already mentioned madden but madden doesn't change and all they do is rake in money every year like at yeah. least we're we're attempting things we're taking risks like it's fun i i mean yeah. it is just fun so i if it was the oh if, <laughs> if it was the same thing every year, it would die. Period. People would just be like, "Oh." But yeah, yep, I think it makes it interesting. There's tiny changes, or or goes from an ability to a field, whatever. Like, mm -hmm. changes the game, changes how it's played, and that's what people like. So, anyway, man, we've been going for over an hour. I want. I oh, hour we're... four. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I, I, I think this is a good place to end it. Uh, we had some really good conversations. Thank you for joining me on this beautiful podcast. Thank you everybody in chat for chilling in either one of our chats. And yeah, man, uh, shout out your social medias. and Yeah, man. I, well, I really appreciate it first off. like I know we have been talking forever and I appreciate you uh, keeping on me even during roster main and everything, but I, I love this stuff, man. I mean, the fact that it, it's a podcast, it's live is, is exciting too, but I mean, let's be real. This is just, this is so much fun to talk and chat and uh, 
you know, go through the passions that we all enjoy. So, um, oh, yeah, yeah, my my uh, my Twitter is just at Dylan Pomeroy, um, and uh, my Twitch, yeah, Twitch.tv slash Thunderhips with the underscore in the middle, man. So, I appreciate you having me on, though, Frag. I appreciate it, man. No, man, I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy, busy schedule to to get on this little podcast. And hey, man, I'm down to do it again. I love just talking about whatever. So, hell yeah, fun. my pleasure, my All pleasure. Right. All right, guys, thank you so much. Leave a like on the video or follow on Twitch or whatever, wherever you're seeing this, leave a like or follow. And thank you guys so much, and we'll see you next time. Peace. All right, dude, that is the podcast. Love that, man. That was super fun. It was fun. It was a lot. That was super fun. Yeah, we're over an hour, dude. We got there in, like, no time. I feel like we just started talking. Yeah, I know. Uh, man, I did so, like... I try to keep it short for like some people I just can tell like aren't like big into it or like won't get deep into the conversation. So like, like the one with uh, Brian was like 25 minutes and I was like, that's good. I got like all the major questions I wanted to talk about and we talked about things, but it was like, kept it short. If people want to watch like that one, that'll be like, give them all the information they want, you know, real quick and doesn't, Take up too much of Brian's time, but when it's like mm-hmm. a friend who like we can talk and chat forever, I could go forever. So at some point, I just oh. like an hour. I'm like, I know I had fun, but I don't know how many other people are going to listen to an hour podcast. <laughs> oh, I love it, man. And whatever, yeah, if you clip it out or, or make it into whatever, but oh, yeah, I, I it just will, it will be on YouTube. Appreciate it. It will oh, yeah, be man. on YouTube. But, well, thanks for helping me out and showing me how to do this too. So yeah, no problem. I, uh, I appreciate that. So um, what are you going today? Are you just chilling? Yeah, I'm probably, uh, I think some friends are making a Among Us lobby. There you go. And so I may play that. Yeah. So. Very nice. Very nice, man. Well, I uh, I will let you go and good to catch up. We'll, uh, we'll keep in touch, man. Yeah, sounds good, brother. Have a good rest of your stream and rest of your night. We'll Thank you. you Thank you, my dude. We'll see you. All righty, chat. I don't know which one's my OG shit.